Okay, okay. Oh, I like how you got this shit set up. We got to um, figure that out. <laughs> oh, like the, the picture? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's easy. H hold on. There we go. Oh, okay, I think we got the computer and the, uh, and the phone. All right, peace. Yeah, peace, peace, bro. Yeah, can the audio come out clear? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah good, bro. All right, my bad, man. Pardon me, man. We All here, good, man. Should I, should I turn the phone um, portrait or is this okay standing up? That's fine. It should no, be fine. fine. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. He, he's okay. visible. He's good. Yeah, hold on. You see, sir. Yeah, we actually yeah. live too, fellas. There we go. Yeah, that there we go. Look better. That look better, bro. A one. A one now. Yeah, how you feeling, man? Uh, I'm great, man. All is well. Okay. Congrats on the baby, too, man. Appreciate that. Thank I you. I know you ain't sleeping much. Nah, you know what? He he don't, he don't, his his hours is decent, you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He running his mother through the, uh, through the grinder, but. Bruh, yeah. I already know. Yeah. <laughs> uh. He, he he own you now, you know what I mean? We're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know how Bro, they go. The whole human being. All right. For real. So are we good? We we yeah, good? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, we good, Rich. Okay. Peace everybody. Okay. Thanks for tapping into another episode of Are You Aware Conversations where we sit down with other aware humans who are we are interested in, motivated, and inspired by. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm the co-founder of the Aware brand. I'm here with my two brothers, my two business partners, Drew and Omar. Say what up, what up, what up? Yo, peace. What up, what up, though? It's good. And, and man, we got a good one for y'all today, man. We got a good one. Um, we have um, our brother. I call he To me, he's one of the young OGs, man. Like, if you guys know anything about, like, black consciousness and there's a, there's, like, there's generations, right? And you have, like, you, you have Phil Valentine. You have uh, Dr. Delbert Blair. You know what I mean? You have people like Black Dot. Professor Griff, what we got with us today is the brother Red Pill. Give it up for yeah. Red Pill, y'all. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like we should have like the uh, sound effect, sound effect or something, right? Like Jay yeah. like the children, like yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I help but, you with um, that. Yeah, man. We're very happy to have to have Red Pill with us today, man. He's a very a really pivotal voice um, in the community, and you know. A lot of people look to, to our brother Rev for his insight on whether it's the news or music or, you know, fashion, a whole bunch of different things, you know. Um, he has a whole bunch of different bags. But um, so, Rev, for people who, because our, you know, our audience has a lot of different entry points to consciousness mm -hmm. and to awareness, you know what I mean? So for people who might, because some people are like, yo, y'all got Red, man, that's crazy. And some people are just like, oh, who is this guy? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. For that's people who don't yeah. really know who you are. Can you say a little about like who you are and some of your passions and your motivations? Indeed. Um, I'm one half of the twin pillars. Uh, mm. Brother Red Pill, my brother, my twin brother is Blue Pill. We are identical twins. A younger brother by the name of KT, the arch degree. And our matriarch is Mama Pill. Her name is Annette Thomas. She's one of the three uh, defendants uh, that went up against the Supreme Court in that monumental case of Dr. Sabi versus the Ooh, United States, okay. uh, New York State, yeah. So she's very pivotal, and um, she helped cure the first AIDS patient, Frank White. So we just really representing our mama, to be honest with you. We just, oh. you know, we're just here um, in this community doing the work that we were groomed to do. Uh, mm. You know, we have a brand, we have a media brand that goes by the name of KTL which is an acronym for Know the Ledge, which is basically a play on knowledge. Uh, but it's also a lyric, you know, it's also a lyric from our, for the God MC, uh, Eric B and Rakim, uh, Know the Ledge. Mm. You know, that, that is our inspiration, just to mm. keep it. I'm, not, I'm a person who gives it up to those who inspire me right. because I know that I'm teaching the youth and I know that I'm teaching my generation and, you know, people who come after me I listen to people who are of a generation before me and I, I listen to the names that they mentioned. These are like yeah. nuggets that help me on my travel and whatnot. So on this journey, 
you know, uh, we're all on a journey. We're all on a path of enlightenment. Uh, we took an exit on the highway and it's called consciousness. Mm. Uh, we're students of the metaphysical underground dark matter think tank by way of LIU circa 2001, uh, 2000, Dr. Valentine. Mm -hmm. I opened a production, Black Dot, uh, a brother by the name of Chris, another brother by the name of Shabazz with Shabazz Productions. So they basically ushered in this new era of consciousness, which would be identified as the hip hop generation. Gotcha. Consciousness with a twist. Not the Dr. Ben consciousness or the, you know, that's the 80s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Baby consciousness. This was more of a hip hop inspired, you know, so the brothers had a little more swag. Then you get the, yeah. the fancy, you know, the lingo, the dress, the fashion, then the lifestyle was somewhat upgraded when our generation began to express ourselves because what we did was we restored the the lost pillar of hip hop, which was culture. There's mm. five pillars of hip hop, DJing, MCing, which is master of the ceremony or mic controller. There's the graffiti artist, yeah. there's the dancer, the TikToker, and then they removed the fifth pillar, which was culture and knowledge. Um, that's the expression that you see in the golden era of hip hop when they had the MCs teaching and then they were encouraging brothers to do bills from the nation of gods and earth. So they call it the conscious community. You know, that's a title that we did not want because mm. we're not a community. We're a network, right? Um, the day we become a community is the day that we can say that we fulfilled our ancestors and our, um, our master teachers their quote unquote lessons and whatnot because Dr. Sabi was building a community in Honduras and right. he has also had a, a plan for multiple communities called Bolingo and that never really manifested. So mm. I don't want to confuse people because a community is where we didn't have to stay in. If we had a community, nobody could tell us to stay inside. Nobody right. could have respirated down our throat. You know, we would self-administer ourselves. We would diagnose ourselves we would be able to come up with our own rules as to how to administer. Because as you see, there's a, there's a segment of Americans that don't follow the rules. Facts. That's deep. So our brand, I'm, pardon me, say it again. No, I, no, I said that's deep. No doubt. So we officially threw our hat in the ring um, and became a media platform in 2008 by KTL Media. We started with KTL TV, Nodalesh TV, which was one of the first YouTube platforms at 08, dedicated to, you know, standing on the front lines with cameras, putting the word out. We assisted our brother Sarnetta with helping build his first YouTube channel. Right. Although, yeah, yeah. no, although he was the master in the realm that preceded that, and that was the DVD game. And prior to that, it was the VHS game. And prior to that, it was the audio cassette game. I remember yeah. riding around listening to Farrakhan audio cassettes and Dr. York in, wow. my, in, 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 in one of my homies, Q45. This was in, <laughs> right? Because the audio cassettes were moving around and they were spreading underground information. Then the VHSs were doing it. So our teachers were platinum before YouTube. There was a yeah, million, there was fast. a million views logged in before Mark Zuckerberg, YouTube, Facebook, any of that. There was a humongous underground movement, hence forth the name Metaphysical Underground. Now, mm -hmm. this invisible empire or this invisible university was a privileged membership. And it wasn't open to everybody. It was almost like a secret society If, if in, in, in so many ways. I know that people get scared of that term, but mm -hmm. to be honest, if you're going to hold power, you better begin to um, think about a fraternal order, meaning a group of men and women who come together and speak of things in privacy. You feel what I'm saying? Right, that's you, need that. you need that. You need that because mm -hmm. that's what power, power is in secrets. If, you, if we had a, a company right now, our power would be the fact that we have our intellectual property in secrecy. We have encrypted messages and all of our information. Remember the movie Inception? When they, were, when they had Leonardo DiCaprio all the way to he was invading someone's dreams mm -hmm. to get the most precious resources, and that's our intellectual property. So fraternal, people get spooked out when they hear fraternities. But in sports, there's fraternities, right? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and um, there's a fraternal order of police. That's a, that's a, that's a large. There, there's a large of individuals that come together as a social. The Bada Bing Club 
that's the social order. That's that's a fraternity. Um, of course, you got Masons. Mm -hmm. You have firemen. You have the quote unquote with Jimmy Hoffa and we're doing with the union. That was a form of fraternal order, right? Mm -hmm. When when you unionize, that's a fraternity. Yeah. So, People make that like it's a bad thing. I'm saying that we as a people, we the the frequency that we're on, we don't have one. I'm not gonna put on no goddamn apron and go run behind the Prince Halls and whatnot because they don't they they're not catering to the level of information that I'm on. We, there's people that I know that have surpassed the ninety nine degrees and all of these things. Mm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. So our media empire was YouTube, then it went to Blog Talk Radio, then we began to practice something called digital convergence, where digital convergence is where your platform merges with other platforms in the digital realm, because we're new media. So the power of new media is for platforms to connect. So I demonstrated that by connecting with Black News 102, Sarnetta TV, and then I connected with Baba TV, then I connected with Kia Life Productions, who are double ass hip hop is real. They're, they're real big on the battle rap circuit. Then I then I converged with Black Magic 363, Brother Rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I got back to our platform, which is Know the Ledge, by relaunching Know the Ledge Radio. Uh, and then we did Melanin Mondays, Third Eye Thursdays, Tough Talk Tuesdays. So we took a spin around the community introduced us into new networks, new audiences, help boost the stocks on all the other platforms because I add value to platforms. I, I don't I don't speak down on my value. I speak up on my value because this community is a is notorious for undervaluing people and underappreciating people mm -hmm. and then robbing them. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that takes place in other communities. We know that in hip hop where the artists complain about getting two cents off a twenty dollar album and they're not they're not they're not treated right they're not honored they don't get rewarded they don't even get money like that tlc was broke shit like that that's that's what i'm referring to mm -hmm. you can if you don't have, if you don't if you're not on top of your brand you could get ran through the ringers mm -hmm. not just the community anywhere especially in this new digital uh age that we live in where branding is about everything so we demonstrated our value and then we returned back to our platform to rebuild it in this new digital era. And that's, in, that's what I'm in the process of actually doing right now. I just got, yeah, I got my green screen studio. I done purchased a few Macs because low key white people are selling, mm -hmm. yeah, white, white people selling everything right now for sale during the Corona. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, look, uh, but Red, look. Look, Red, so you said that you started on the YouTube. That was in 2008, right? Yeah. So that's funny because, like, I remember the first video I ever saw on YouTube, like, with, with y'all, it was uh, Black Dot. He was talking about, um, he was talking about the chakras. Yeah, and yeah. And comparing it to rappers, right? And I was just like, yo, what is this dude talking about? He's like, yo, we could walk through a table if you want to. And and then I, from, from Black Dot, I heard about A. Rashid, and then from A. Rashid, I heard about child and I'm like, yo, it's like a whole, like, I love how you said network. You know what I mean? Like it really, it really is a network. I know. Oh, oh, you got a question, right? For, for, oh uh, yeah. 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 So, so my, my mind is kind of going right now. Uh, yeah. It's too many nuggets. He didn't drop already. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but red for me. So I grew up in kind of like a split household to where it was one side was pan Africanism. Mm. It was like black, it was African consciousness over there. Um, I knew about black Jesus as a kid, but mm -hmm. I kind of didn't all, I didn't all the way understand, right? And then my mom side was more of a Christian traditional side. Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like for you, I know Mama Pill raised y'all in that, but like when did your journey start though? Like your consciousness well, journey start? Mama Pill was dedicated to her journey, right? Mama Pill met Sabi in 1980 in St. Croix, and then Mama Pill gave birth to KT, the arts degree, um, in 1980s, that's she met Dr. Sabi as a result of complications that she was having in her pregnancy. Mm. Her life with restoring her iron and things of that nature. And from there, she invited him to come back to America, New York and Harlem specifically to fight the crack scourge. This was in the eighties. This was early eighties and whatnot. And she was, and he, he had left America or North America for good and he was basically on the top of a mountain in St. Croix. And he was he he was in going back and forth from PR 
because he spoke, this is Alfredo Bowman. He spoke, uh, prof, uh, pr, you know, he spoke Spanish very well. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, I'm, I, my people are from St. Croix as well, Crucian, and they, my grandmother spoke fluent Spanish because you could take a boat to Puerto Rico from right there. Okay. Um, Mama Pill gave us the option of staying with her on the journey or going to live with my father, right? In Flatbush, Brooklyn. And we chose my father. Uh, my father mm -hmm. was more financial. He's a professor. My father was a professor before we were born. Matter of fact, my father met wow. my mother at Columbia University. You know, he's wow. a professor in African um, lit. Wow. He's over and you know he came out of the era when they allowed the uh the black power people to get jobs yeah, after yeah, this yeah. right they started handing jobs out and my father he you know he found his way in the colleges to teach the information you know um on a collegiate level right rather than just going to vietnam or whatever they were doing and whatnot mm -hmm. So in my household my father was always he was more of a like the brother said uh black power um you know eyes on the prize we knew everything. eyes on the prize bro <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know we he listens to jazz he raises us on jazz you know just all traditional ados or what they call fba type of black lifestyle you know mm -hmm. it was huxtable like though because like i said my dad he's a provider um you know he has he got a good background and he just was, he was a, he was always getting it. He was always providing. He just made sure that these two twins that he had, you know, was going to live the best life that he could provide them. Um, we rebelled, you know, we went against our better judgment. We, we got encapsulated by the, uh, by the culture. You know, we yeah, yeah. remember I'm a, I'm a 75 baby, you know, I know it don't look it, but we can talk about that. <laughs> We'll go over the product line, but <laughs> well, I grew up in a time. Remember that. Let, let's let's speak about the the um the intricacies of that. I remember a time when hip hop was not on TV, right? I grew up to Billy Idol, Billy Ocean, Pat Benatar, uh, you know, Cindy Lauper, you know, and then we listened to Run DMC. Mm. It's got a little bit of Prince. Michael Jackson, I listened to NXS, I listened to George Michael. They list they they was they was they had an assembly line of LBGT artists for us when we was in the 80s, my niggas. And they were dressing kind of crazy. <laughs> so Run DMC saved us with the fucking with the hard denim, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, LL Cool J saved us by taking his fucking shirt off and having a Kangol on and acting mad gangster around women. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. Young niggas was doomed. You know what I mean? Like we were in a cesspool of, you know, Western culture that was very experimentational in the '80s pop, juxtaposed on top of our poverty, juxtaposed on top of the fact that they were um, low key preparing to chemically attack us, mm -hmm. and they were, they were they were lining our people up. This was around the Reagan era, right when he yeah, came yeah. up with an agenda to flip the prosperity that we were achieving in the seventies, keep in mind, although we had a dope, uh, there was a dope era and there was a scourge of dope. Our people based off of the pictures that I see based off of the movies that I watch and the TV shows, they were in their most highest self in the seventies. That's just mm -hmm. how I see it. That's just my humble opinion. And I feel heroin interrupted that. And then in the eighties crack totally flipped that shit on his head. Mm -hmm. But for that era, based off of the Ebony and Jet magazine covers, I, I love the 60s, but we were coming really into our godhood and our goddesshood into the 70s because we embraced, we went further than Africa in the 70s. We began to experiment with the mushrooms, we yeah. would smoke weed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were unloading the trauma of the 50s, the 60s, mm -hmm. and whatnot. We were beginning to you you see the people shedding their skin like they beginning to glow and right. you know and then the eighties come niggas got Jerry curls and <laughs> uh -huh. there was an assault and hip hop saved my life mm. and I owe a lot to it it was my saving grace it was my religion it was it, it blew me away 
it was a form of of because my dad had you know we were angry children like because we were coming up learning about who this man who this European was and who he wasn't and my mama she, he, my father's an atheist right so he didn't put oh, he didn't wow. put, yeah but my stepmother right and there's always this dichotomy in the households that's why I'm not uh, I, I'm very meticulous and careful when I give people advice about their household situations. What not to walk away uh, from? What to stick around? I'm just saying, I lived through it on multiple times. I eventually left my household. I ran away. I left at 16, and I went to go live with AA, with his family. Wow. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. minute I walked through the door, his mother, God, God, rock, God, you know, resting. Yeah. Uh, God rock, bless the dead. Yeah. The minute I walked in the door, she gave me my shahada. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't even the before you gotta get I dropped to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the window. They had this big ass window overlooking the skyline of Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got thrusted into this life and it was an eye opener, but I needed that because being coddled and cause I promise you, if you see where we grew up on, we grew up on a house a, a block. It was interesting because right up the block is Church Ave with it, the crazy Jamaican shower posse shooting things up. Mm. But my dad, he hit a lick and he he moved us on a block that had million dollar houses on it in Flatbush, uh -oh. right in this right in this little nice area. But you know, because that's that's what he was on. He was yeah, like, yeah. I'm taking full advantage of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we were wearing good clothes and all of that, and. He was like, if you sell drugs or if you take them, I got the I got the means to kill you, right? I could do that, like, and I'm I'll make that happen because I'm not going to I'm not gonna walk the streets with you niggas and y'all embarrassing me like that. Mm -hmm. So we started yeah. boosting. So we was like, all right, you ain't saying nothing, you know what I mean? So we started <laughs> getting down with the low lives, and you know, mm -hmm. I, I bring that up because you know, I always I'm a I'm a parent now. And my son is 12, oh, you wow. know, yeah. he thinks, he, yeah, he thinks he's lit. He's kind of lit, you know, um, <laughs> wow. I broke, I broke ranks around 12, 13, right? I broke ranks with, you know, just with my mind, me and my brother, we just lost it. Like we, our hormones kicked in and I look back on pictures and I'm like, God damn, I had the, the evils was in me. Because, mm -hmm. you know, this was a pivotal time. We was in a, you know, the posses was big. Before the gangs, there was posses. You know, the hip hop started going violent. You know, we was into N.W.A. We was mm -hmm. into Scarface. We was into uh, Cool G Rap, Symphony. They was, you know, in the streets, the violent shit was, was ramping up. Right. Because yeah. where I came from, you know, there was always this Caribbean thing going on. There was the the Jamaicans versus the Haitians, the Americans versus the Haitians, the Jamaicans beating up on the Haitians, the Haitians acting Jamaican, but they found their way. They got the most improved out of all of all of the nationalities. Like the 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 Haitians struck back with a vengeance. Yeah, it was a vengeance of the Haitians in the nineties and shit. You know, because they <laughs> because they came into themselves. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. were trying to be Jamaican. It wasn't working. When they embraced that Zo life, they became more powerful. That and was they, powerful. Yeah. And people had to say, you know what? Speak that shit around me. No, you never heard HBO after that. Haitian body odor. You know, people were they were not degrading them. You know, they were respectful. Yeah. Um, That's crazy because that, that brought that bring back a lot of memories too. Yeah. From, 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 from around the way, right? Yeah, because yeah. we grew up in the Haitian yeah. community too. Yeah, yeah. So That's yeah. a fact. I'm Haitian by association, right? I'm just yeah, exactly. saying. Suck pas say. Say. Yeah. Say. Yeah. You know, and I don't throw them away. I, I'm not with all of the propaganda rhetoric about they taking my jobs or my women and whatnot. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. mad because they take niggas women. You know, the Jamaicans, they'll they'll take your women and you'll never get a back. You know what I'm saying? Or if you have Jamaica, man. Yeah. yeah. Big up Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, big up Jamaica. Boom, boom. You know, got, and two of my children, my, my new son, he's just, he got a Jamaican mother and okay. sons. You know, so I'm I'm I just I'm attracted to, you know, the uh Caribbean culture. I'm attracted to Southern culture, of course. I'm attracted mm -hmm. to Western culture. 
And I'm definitely uh, attracted to Eastern culture. So this all comes about my spirit. I'm not giving, like, this was, this was my environment, bro. Like, my environment dictated how my DNA would develop. Um, genetics. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right, epigenetics. And I was able to dig deeper into different bloodlines of my history. I know that my history goes back into the islands, regardless mm -hmm. of where I am now. I know it goes back onto the continent. You know, I just it, it just resonates. The older you get, or the more the more re the more revolutions around this sun that you make, you going to begin to your intuition begins to wake up. You don't need ancestry DNA to tell you. You can step mm -hmm. off the plane. Mm -hmm. Like it when I used wild. to step off the plane in Miami, I knew for a fact that that place geo geo um G, the geomancy or geodetically that place was good for my DNA because I, the minute I step off the plane, I would get an upgrade. Mm. I, I love that. that. Yeah. I would get <laughs> upgrades. I would come back to New York and they'd be like, fam, what you was doing? Like nothing. You sounded right? different. You looking yeah, different. Yeah, I'm different vibe, yo. I'm yeah. in the mountains right now. I left New York because New York was killing me. Mm. New York was slow roasting me, bro. New York was poisoning me slowly, and I could not see it until I got out. You cannot see that. You can't see you. You. You know. This is. This is why. This is why measurement is always good. We have to be able to measure ourselves, and you gotta have people around you who love you. The, 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 the fact that you could look back and, and be like, "Yo, what was I looking like a year ago? What was I doing? What was I thinking? What was I eating?" and begin to measure who you are now. That's mm. called success, and that's growth. Mm. We be for too much. This is about experience. This yeah. is about, I'm a Scorpio, so my whole journey is about resurrection. It's about yeah, yeah. renewal. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm stagnant. I can't stay in one thing. I can't be on one vibe for long. I have to mm. always begin, I have to change, I have to evolve, because what I notice is, as I change, others change. Mm. You feel yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I not. I I've realized through my travels and through my time doing it. I'm doing a bid right now. Real talk, consciousness. This conscious shit. I'm doing it. People don't realize it. This is my bid. I'm doing it nice. You know, niggas up north used to have like fila suits, laws and shit. They they did they, they bid in fashion. You mm. know, but this is a, definitely a bid because it's a sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? I know what's at stake. Mm. I know that there's no turning back. Mm. I know that I can't just say, nah, I was just playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know what's on the line. Bro, because okay. yeah, yeah. People who've been here before. Mm. Mm hmm So I was like what you what you were saying, man. I was I was thinking about uh I was watching a lecture, Dr. Blair, <laughs> man, and he was talking about how um, you know, they poisoned his wife. They I think they poisoned both of them, right? And his wife. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So like all yo, you talking about like um, your mom and your dad and how you grew up? It makes more sense now about like you in blue. Like things make more sense. Um, but with all of that, like, what do you think? Do you have like a working definition of like what self self awareness is? Because you know we did wear brands. So we talk about self awareness all day. But what is self awareness to you? Uh, self awareness is self love. Mm. Self awareness is consciousness. Self awareness is self worth. Self-awareness is adding value to self because if you can, if you cannot evaluate self, how do you how are you aware of who, who self is? You're not you you're allowing others to add value to you. You're allowing mm. others to say this is how much you are worth an hour. That is not true. They lied to you, they've deceived you, and they are holding you down and holding you back and feeding off of your ignorance. I promise you. Mm. You will want so much more, especially since the economy changed. We're in a new, we're in a new economy. If in case nobody has uh, blown the fucking trumpet, we're in a digital economy. They talking about oh the digital dollar, bro. I got Cash App. I have not used paper money yeah in about four months, mm -hmm. and I don't miss it. You know what I'm saying? So the yeah. digital dollar is here. Yeah, you know, self awareness, being able to know that this power is coming from inside of you, bro. Mm. Not grabbing for straws outside of self and always giving, you're forfeiting your power. 
that shit leaves when you do that. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there, there's, you're, you're, you're giving away something that is innate. That's mm. not right. That's like, you're thotting yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh speaking of that man um so like rich was saying um the aware brand this we started this brand specifically for the for the community for, for us to just be self-aware so but why is like black consciousness and, and, and or being black and, and self-aware of your, your blackness so important right now like why is it so important well primarily the importance about self-awareness and not just knowing about our blackness but knowing about the power of our carbon, the power of our melanin, the power of our spirit, the fact that we are hated and feared by others because of our genetics, because of our genetic superiority, that's knowing yourself on a genetic level. Mm. Um, knowing yourself on a spiritual level will, know, will, will inform you that we are connected to this planet. So the more that they desecrate the planet, the more that they desecrate the animals, the more that they disregard all of nature is the more that they help, to, you know, they are attacking. There's a war on terra firma, mm. not a war on terror, a war on terra firma. So spiritually knowing who we are and knowing that they are in a spiritual war with us, that's why they have us doing what? Worshipping something outside of us, worshipping a, um, a deific force that has been conjured, not in our favor. It's a malefic force that they conjured up and they put a, a wig on it and they're like, yeah, that's him right there. Like, give him, you know, shed blood in his name. And, mm. and spiritually, that has been a detriment to us because we still have ancestors who are going to, remember, they're going to they're going to, if you summon a certain force, it will work for you. Right. So people, they, some, you, you see white people in Haiti, bro. You see Europeans in the Congo. There's no, the, 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 the energy does not discriminate. It, you can summon an African ancestor as a white person. There's, you know what I mean? Like that's possible. Mm -hmm. Energy don't discriminate. The energy, the energy is not like, nah, I don't fuck with y'all like that. <laughs> the energy, if you feed the deity, if you feed the spirit, if you conjure it, you can Ooh. tap into it. Mm, and that's, that's, that's why you, you don't think when he defeated, when King Leopold defeated all of the Congolese and they were importing rubber and they were exporting rubber and they were exporting um, chocolate, they, you, you don't think they exported Palo Mayombe or you don't think mm -hmm. they exported the spiritual systems? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they're exporting spiritual systems and they reverse engineer them in places like the Vatican and all of these other places where they, you know, they do like they did the swastika. They perverted it, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, yeah, they perverted the rainbow. Look at me. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got the sunburst. They, I was in the streets. I'm in Tarjay and... <laughs> a nigga was too much agave in his system had looked at the shirt at first and I was like family oh, this is not an upside down rainbow <laughs> this is a right side up rainbow mm -hmm. they got people running behind a flag where the chakras are upside down mm -hmm. and the rainbow colored the spectrum is upside down and they running with that mm -hmm. and I'm like yo restore the spectrum, mm -hmm. restore the spectrum. Roy B. Jiv and all of that like restore the proper spectrum you know don't be afraid of colors they got us afraid of the color spectrum now like they have mm. uh they have hetero men ashamed to embrace a color spectrum and i'm, mm -hmm. saying, that, mm -hmm. I'm saying that that's that's another form of sorcery going back to self-awareness i'm aware of myself i'm aware that i'm not the flesh right i'm aware that i'm light i'm a light being i'm aware that i'm the spirit so I'm not I'm not really anchored down by all of these flesh rules and you know it's a lot of prison it's a lot of it's a lot of prison a uh, prison planet uh philosophies mm -hmm. that will weigh you down because we are here temporarily if this coronavirus haven't shown us that mm -hmm. and if 2020 hasn't shown us that Bad. we need to pay more attention we are here this is a blip in time this Bad. is a stop this is changing your tires this is not, this ain't it. This is Fleet, this fleeting moment. moment. Yeah. Fleeting moment. Yeah. So get yeah. the best yeah. of your experiences. Do everything that you can in your power to find out who that light is. Yeah. So um, let me shift. Let me shift a little bit. Um, so like the, the conscious network, right? I like how you said network. Um, yeah. 
like so many concepts, man. Like I remember um, I was watching um, Reverend Valentine talking about the Matrix, right? And then he was talking about melanin and light code and all this stuff. And I'm like, yo. So that was, I watched that maybe 2009, right? Yeah. So nobody was really talking about melanin, right? So like, I feel like information goes through a cycle, right? Like y'all will talk about something and then it will take like, you know, five, 10 years and then it, and it breaks into the mainstream, right? Melanin, ancestors, uh, sea moss, right? Uh, all type, you know, all types of stuff. charcoal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, activated charcoal, like all that stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. So like, like, how do you, how do you feel about, you know, I'm sure you know that you're ahead of your time in certain in a certain sense, but like, how do you feel about like just observing the cycle and you know all of that? I feel that I'm a part of the apocalypse, mm. and apocalypse only means the awakening. That's the only meaning of apocalypse. Hollywood perverted it and made it a fear tactic, but the apocalypse means the lifting of the veil. Of the veil. So you know, from 2012 with the end of the illusion. Because it's 2012 in Ethiopia right now, by the way. Mm. Oh. With the end of the illusion in 2012, <laughs> the end of the world meant the end of the Maya, meant the end of the illusion. Hey, this, yeah. this is an illusion. Um, some people will say that us in our waking state is really us dreaming. And when we're dreaming, that's us awake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then your eyes are the apertures to the quote unquote world, right? Your eyes are the windows to the soul. So the more that you open up your pupil, the more that you get information, the more you're able to, to receive light. If your pupils are not dilated, if they're not open a certain amount, the, you're, you're getting a restricted uh, amount of light into your eyes. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing things for what they are. So somebody could be right in front of you. A Harvey Weinstein could be right in front of you and you don't see the monster for him, for who he is because mm -hmm. your aperture is not open enough. You can't see the alien in them. Mm -hmm. Right, your eyes are closed. That that you have small eye, you you have a small aperture. You're not allowing the light spectrum into your quote unquote because light is information, and you're not feeding the mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's like know. when you open the door like a little bit, like the door is ajar. You're trying to see who it is, and you can't really tell who it is until you, you open. Could the just door. Make it, yeah, you could make out a silhouette, but what if you wide? What if the door flew wide open? And you've seen everything for what it is. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. mushrooms. That's 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 the toad. That's five meo DMT. Mm -hmm. you feel yeah, yeah. Waska, I promote plant-based medicines for journeys for for quote unquote inner space travel. Not that shit. Space. Uh, fuck Elon Musk and them is talking about. I don't want to go to the bottom of the ocean, and I'm really not trying to go to Mars right now. Now with no, I would know where white folk. I'm not getting with y'all. I'm good. Y'all all right. I'm floating around doing weird stuff. You know, playing with your poop. I'm not no white people are too weird, right? I'm not going to Mars with y'all. But I wanna go in, I wanna go into an infinite space inside of self. Mm. And I feel that this journey that we're all on is a personal one. Mm. You know, I'm allowing people to experience my journey and I'm having fun with it. And I'm also, you know, I'm doing my due diligence by being a journalist because I enjoy journalistic, my journalist, journalistic duties. Um, I'm being a reporter. I'm being a decoder. I'm being a journalist. I'm being like, a, a, I'm helping to synthesize certain narratives and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm really just tapping into the power that I feel that, um, you know, I worked hard for. You know what I'm saying? And I was patient because I wasn't I wasn't trying to step into I wasn't trying to ride into Dr. Valentine's lane. Mm. You know, it's when Dr. Valentine began to slow down. And as a student, he broke my heart in the audience. OK, he crushed. Uh, I was fucking destroyed when he was like, yeah, this is going to be one of my last lectures. And yeah, I'm about yeah. to over the black dot and this person and that person. And I'm in the audience like what? So yeah, yeah. By him handing over the reins and passing the baton, it allowed me to lace up my sneakers, look at my brother, and say, "Are you ready to run?" Mm -hmm. And then get out there and start running this race. Now we've been running this race more than ten years. We got out on the, we was on it. We've been on the hostro for a minute now, you know, running laps. 
you know, on this marathon. It's a whole stroke. Yeah, it is a whole stroke because it's a hamster wheel because mm -hmm. you, you're chasing egos. You're chasing, you know, information is rewinding. It's, 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 we're digressing in terms of information output. What Valentine was giving out in 01, you can't find that anymore. Bruh. The information is commercialized. I somewhat, uh, you know, it's a sign of the times. It's supposed to happen, but the part that I'm trying to play or the part that I want to play or the part that I'm playing is the filter system and the regulation of it because unregulated deregulation is dangerous. Mm -hmm. information in the wrong hands is dangerous. Yeah, Keep yeah. In mind, like I said, this was a private conversation and now they put private conversation in the public amongst the profane. Guess what, guess what people in the public can do with private information? Mm. You know, well, because yeah. absolute power mm -hmm. corrupts absolutely. That's right. And mm -hmm. knowledge is power. So you got people who are corrupt who are drinking from wells and it's making them absolutely corrupt. And they're utilizing information because information could be weaponized. So they're utilizing information to weaponize against. The Europeans, the alt writers and all of them, the the quote the, the ones who just the ones who just shot the brother Ahmed, they yeah. weaponized propaganda and used it. They weaponized the Fox rhetoric. They weaponized Trump rhetoric. They mm -hmm. weaponized white inferiority, white fragility concepts, and then they, they, they use that to murder someone. And they've mm. been doing that since Trayvon Martin's uh, quote-unquote ritualistic sacrifice and the fact that he received no justice. Yeah. Um, we would have to ask if this is the ancestors reminding us and, and continuing to quote-unquote curse us, or is this, I don't, I mean, you know, at this point, it, I know what it is because if you look at it from the streets perspective, you know what it is. Mm. It's war. You know what it is. There's people walking around in the streets, like the fact that Malcolm X's killer was really walking around New York and New Jersey, and niggas knew that. That weakened the movement. Mm. That was every day that, that that happened. That tore that 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 further plunged the stocks of a movement that said that they love that man. If you love that man, mm -hmm. if you love Tupac, you mm -hmm. would and you know who did something to Tupac, you would have you would have did something for Tupac. If right. you love Trayvon and you know somebody did something to that man, you would have did something. If you love Ahmed, if you love both of them and all of these people. Mm -hmm. Because we could not obey two masses. If it's either niggas are or they're not, it, uh, are you are you what you say you are or are you not? Because you're gonna do it to each other, but you're not doing it nowhere that else. That kills me, yo. That kills me, man. Yeah, huh? you're not who you say that you are. We're going through the identity crisis has gotten to a point where it has become a, a, a matter of life and death. Because the way that the world is moving right now, they're going to make us uh, stand up for who we said that we are. Hip hop is the number one genre in the world. Mm -hmm. So people around the world is hearing niggas grab their nuts and talking about how they're gonna sleep with their girl and they're coming through to spray shit up. Mm. And now everybody on Demon Time. That's the thing right now. Everybody on Demon Time. So what the fuck is that? What is that? <laughs> What's Demon Time? <laughs> what I hate that? that shit. You know, everybody on Demon Time. But it's only to be demons towards each other. So speaking of that, man, that's that's a great point, man. I think a lot of us we we need to start holding ourselves accountable yeah. in that topic. You know what I mean? But it's a big uproar right now with, with what happened to our, our brother Amar Arby down in Georgia. So how do we unify? Because everybody's talking about this unification part, part, right? Everybody, every, whenever something like this happens, everybody like, yo, we need to fight back. But from your perspective, I would love to hear your perspective on how can we unify when it comes to economics, when it comes to social issues like this, when it comes to tech, all this stuff. What's the best route to go right now? All right. From your opinion. From my opinion, drastic times call for drastic measures. The Michigan militia is the largest, is one of the fourth largest standing armies in the world, right? So with so much against us, it's time to utilize the influencers to put their resources and their influence where their motherfucking mouth is. What mm. do I mean? I mean, simple. 
Rock Nation, let's start with them. You got Meek Mill, he got the streets. You got Griselda, they got the streets. You got, um, who else you got? You got J. Cole, he got part of the street. He got street influence. You got, who else he got on, on Rock Nation right now? You got you got Rick Ross, and he you got the Rock Nation brunch with all of these grown ass men with all of the, supposedly they got street ties. Well, this is what you yeah. do. You create a fun. You create a you create a um you and Puff and them get together and you create a ten million or a five million dollar or twenty million dollar fund that will fund the development, the immediate development and deployment of quote unquote private security firms. Mm. Private security firms. One example of a private security firm is what Eric Prince created, Blackwater. These are the same people, if you were in the tour of duty in Iraq, in Afghanistan, you know what I'm talking about. All of the private contractors who are walking around with military-grade weapons, they were ex-police, ex-quote-unquote military, but they're private contractors, and they have the right to defend their clients by any means necessary. So with private military contractors protecting our neighborhoods, most importantly, neighborhoods that have high crime rates. We have to yeah. deploy the security forces and we have to police ourselves. Then once we start policing ourselves, we have to turn these gang members into our private security forces mm. because they are wasting their quote unquote old goon energy. They're wasting their quote unquote Shango energy. Well, I would never tell. Talk, uh, talk that talk. <laughs> warrior, not to be warrior like. You're not going to tell. Uh, it's almost like Game of Thrones with kingdoms. Well, the kingdoms where the warriors live is called Philadelphia, Baltimore. These are kingdoms. If we were going to war, we would solicit the kingdom. There was kingdoms of scholars. There were kingdoms of Renaissance men. There was kingdoms mm. of the royal court. Then you had different kingdoms of pure warriors. You would activate those warriors to go to war with you. You would have to give them incentives because they would have to be, you would have to say, you know what? Y'all get to take, you get to pillage the whole town and take the women back. That's called the booty of war. And that's what they would ride out for. They were giving them the right to pillage. You understand? So in the flip side, in the modern days, the, the, it's a check. Them Blackwater employees was getting paid more than um, army personnel to go out there. They was getting oil money from Halliburton. They was getting money from Dick Cheney and them. Probably they were getting yeah. money. From, mm -hmm. Yeah, so now they get money from the Koch. They get millions of dollars to fund their uh, movements. So these entertainers, especially the athletes, we talking about shadow investment. Don't get on YouTube. Don't get on entertainment yeah. nights yeah. with AJ. We don't, it's not about that. The European don't move like that. They're not talking to nobody on TV. They're mm -hmm. on the dark web talking. They're on the deep web conversating on in encrypted rooms. Mm -hmm. They're not on mm -hmm. they're not on Broadway. You on you see they work on Broadway. They do they catch stains on Broadway, but all of the planning and whatnot is done offline and in secrecy on um on, on you know what's that uh, a private P was that VPNs virtual private yeah. networks and stuff. Yep. So I would tell the entertainers it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Y'all have to it's 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 it was all about the Benjamins. All y'all niggas got blood on your hands. We're not gonna bring that up though. Mm. Those mass secret indictments. We're not gonna bring that up because yeah. we think the time for that. You know what I'm saying? But if y'all really want to get really, if y'all really want to talk about it, y'all got to answer for all of the fuckery that y'all was doing. Y'all have not denounced Harvey Weinstein. You did, not, you did not denounce the Bill Clinton. You did not denounce Hillary Clinton. You didn't denounce Bill Gates. They had Dr. Fauci on The Breakfast Club and Bill Gates. And after all of the information came out that these people are trying to kill us, they did not denounce him. Mm. But Obama had to denounce Farrakhan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Every we always got to denounce somebody, but you never seen none of them denounce nobody. So the entertainers, they owe us. We've made them who they are. Right. More than the athlete, the entertainers have been stringing us along with empty promises, and now they're out here. They 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 think they swag surfing, but they out here stealing cloth. You know what I'm talking about? 
they out here trying to put on the clothes. They trying they put on dirt. They trying to put dashikis on and sneak and trying to fit into the crowd. That's the cycle, bro. But they did that. Remember, Tupac did not want to play Sharif and Minutes to Society. True. Once true, they got true. rid of tearing down the conscious prototype and the archetype in the nineties, they deliberately did that. That was the small hat controlled media because black men like the Wu Tang Clan. And other black men were calling themselves God body, Allah, mm-hmm. justice, mm-hmm. all of that. And white man was the devil. And that, that was prevalent in hip hop culture before they infiltrated it. Russell Simmons was the main culprit. Him and Rick Rubin, they took the culture and they took it and commercialized it. That's mm-hmm. why he's getting his karma right now. Mm-hmm. He got to sit somewhere in a fucking lotus position while he gets cooked. He sold us out for gold fucking ceilings and toilets. Mm. I promise you, mm. because when he was on some good cocaine, he had, you know, he, I don't know about his sexuality, but mm. he had some weird white folk around him and Rick Rubin, who was a Satanist. Mm. And then they brought Liar Cohen and everything else is history. Hence, mm. we're, we're, we're at where we're at right now, mm. where the whole culture is under, mm. mother, they're, uh, they, the whole culture has been kidnapped. It's a fact. The people who I grew up with, I thought I loved these brothers. They all have betrayed us. And that shit hurt my heart because I was willing to say, I was willing to go to jail for Jay-Z. Mm. Matter of fact, I took mad penitentiary chances because I'm like, what would Jay-Z do? Mm. He, wow. he would go and get it. And I went out and got it. I took, I was flirting with death every fucking day to feed myself. Mm. And I was living, I was living Biggie's dream. I was living, I was living, they, 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 them niggas programmed me in a tunnel. I, I came out of the tunnel with tunnel vision and I was tunnel. living that life up until the, the time that my son saved me. It was the birth of my son in 07. They really turned it around for me. And I tell my brothers, y'all should have children every four years because they change I your can't, bro. Nah. <laughs> bruh, bruh, bruh. No, ch- children, children definitely <laughs> does, yeah. does that. Yeah. Uh, my son helped me with my journey, for sure. My son, he he leveled me up. My daughter yeah. leveled me up, and now my son just came, and I'm feeling my levels change because, it you does. know, yeah. Now, we could talk about the other extremities that's involved with maintaining a healthy relationship with the mothers, and we could talk about the the tug of war between raising your child to be a fucking Roman versus a Carthaginian when in Rome. Oh. Jeez. You know, and the fact that the, the mothers will sell the children to the system. We could talk about that, but I don't want to hearken on that at the at the end of the day. I'm just saying that, you know, I'm I'm identifying as my progeny as being my life saving force because they gave they added worth to me. I I was I was miserable with money, bro. I did not I I had fame, I had money, I had diamond earrings. Me and my brother had platinum chains. We were signed to Mike Tyson. In the 90s, I was signed to Mike Tyson management and I was on the run from parole for three years. And I was doing Sean John fashion shows. I was on the cover of a mag. Me and my brother, we was on covers of magazines. We won this thing for WBLS. We was doing fashion shows and I was running from the law. Mm. That's how much on it. And and, and, and I'm not going to put Mike Tyson's business out there, but Mm -hmm. I was watching this nigga do the most savage shit ever. He was a fucking savage of all savages. <laughs> That's why when I sit back and I, I, you know, he don't, I don't even know if he even know about red pill. You know what I mean? He might, he might not. But when I see him and I know where he was heading and I know, I know the, I know the rate that he was spiraling out of control at. And now I see him talking about how the toad medicine helped save him. Yeah. He, he said got, like, yeah, he said it changed his life. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, Remember, because it kills the ego, it helps to kill. It's not going to kill the ego forever. When you're under it, you'll feel the ego slip away, and then you become one with what they call is the one or the force, mm-hmm. the light. But it's not like a light that I got shining on me. It's a light that feels like something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's an energy. And then Body. I had somebody. I had I had my dude, Uncle Hank. Right, Hank. He's the one who administers the uh, medicine. And I was like, you know what? I want you to record a few minutes of this shit because you're not supposed to record. <laughs> Yo. No, but you're not supposed to record. Like, if you're on, if you're going through something that's spiritual, 
the spirit will leave when you start recording. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're in the booth, freestyling, the free, the style don't come if you're capturing it. There's something going on that the shit will, it's a fleet, it will, it will go away. So I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm on the low, capture this shit. So he showed me the video after when I looked at it, I'm like, God damn, I felt embarrassed and shit because a Ooh, girl man. Up. Yeah. If I if because I it was feeling, it was like an orgasmic feeling as I was under it. I'm smiling and shit. And you know, and my because I, I did the research on everything before I even fucked with it. Yeah, yeah. It activates your gamma rays in your brain. It's a flood okay. of gamma of the gamma frequency. rays. Yeah. The frequency, so our brain waves, we have beta waves, theta waves, gamma rays. You 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 would be lucky if you ever experienced gamma rays in your life, just living a regular life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the five meo DMT, which is not the same as DMT. DMT is called spirit molecule. You hallucinate. Mm -hmm. You might see aliens. You might see the boxes. You might see cubes in the sky, but the toad is different. There's no hallucination. There's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's called the God molecule because you become one with whatever the source is. There are two energies on the planet, love and hate. That's it. Yeah. Hate yeah. expresses itself in fear, jealousy, envy, fuckboyisms, and the fuckery and all of that. Love, joy, orgasm, bliss, uh, beauty, all of that. And to be honest with you, there's a duality, of course, but when you feel that light, you know that the universe was not created off of hate. There's no mm. hate in the universe. That's man, that's some earth shit. The, the universe is love. There's no hate out there. That's a great point. That's a great point. I'm, so the universe is love, right? And so I, it feels like collectively and individually, we need to be we programmed, right? Because it's yes. a lot of hurt and trauma within us, right? Yes. So like, how do we, how do we even approach that, right? How do we even approach that? Because what you said about the mobilizing the, 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 the street uh, gangs to protect us, that yes. was dope as hell, right? That concept is dope mm -hmm. as hell. But like, how do we even reprogram ourselves to even think that way, to do that, to want to ride for each other? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do, how do we... about, yeah, self awareness brings about self worth. Self worth brings about self value. Self value brings about self pres pre um, preservation. Preservation. <gasps> and when you get into the mind of self preservation, it's not survival, right? It's not, you're not in your primal state. Now, gangbangers are in their primal state. They're in their survival state. You know what I'm saying? There's this it's, it's sex and survival, right? Survival is I got a trap. I got to eat. I'm going to sell drugs to anybody. I'm on these missions. I got to kill my ops. Ah, 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 ah. Sex is I got to procreate. I'm laying up. I need I need some neck because, you know, shit hard in these streets. You know, I need I need these shorties around me. You know, I need the da-da-da-da-da. And, you know, I'm having children. I'm procreating because... My life is in danger. I'm I'm living yeah, every yeah, I'm living yeah, every day. Yeah. So I'm going if my if, if if I'm getting money, I'm gonna procreate. I'm gonna recreate myself because if they take the homie out of here, my bloodline is over. The, the bloodline of gangsters. If you got away, if you if you big blood, whatever. If, if you really about that shit and you really in your shit, you're gonna want to recreate yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know why? I, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna just be all into myself or am I going to be so aware of who I am that I know that I could create something greater than me? Mm. Because once you have a seed, it's not about you no more. Facts. You feel me? You got to come to terms with, there's a little dude running around who not only owns your baby mama, but he's <laughs> better than you. <laughs> he's a refined version, bro. Right. He's a refined version of you. And he owns your, your the, the woman who was your whiz before that's him or her. They got that. That's you gotta you gotta share her. Real talk. <laughs> nah, facts. You mm -hmm. gotta share her. That's yeah, them. yeah. They grew inside of her. That's them, bro. She don't own the child. The child own the the mama. That's them. Mm -hmm. All uh, until she leaves, they like I got you. You me. You you give me that breast. Let me drink something. Let me. Yeah. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> Be drinking from the breast, looking at you like, <laughs> looking at. <you. laughs> I bought it. This is me, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, hit me on my DM if you're trying to set up a date with her. But I got this. 
<laughs> nah, that's good. Mm -hmm. but, but, yeah. but like what you what you said about so I'm hearing like um we come in the world with a with a disposition, right? So like warriors come in with the warrior disposition, right? Scholars come in with the scholar disposition, healers come in with the healer disposition, right? But yeah. because of lack of awareness of self, right? Not knowing your history, not knowing who you are, you will be operating on the lower frequency of that. Well, you just be functioning on ignorance because we were our culture has been upended. If me and you was born into Indian culture, mm -hmm. when we were born, they would do our chart. Mm -hmm. If me and you were born into West African traditions, before we was born, right? Maybe even the two parents would have got a reading and they would have been paired to bring down Ogun, right? So then when you arrive, you would get your reading, right? And then they would do your birth chart. So mm -hmm. even in America, we would find out the time of your birth. We would find out everything. And then we would run it through a computer right now. You could just write, it's an app. It's yeah. right there. Lit. Run a birth chart. And then on your chart, we would know the planets that are influencing you. Then we will go a little bit further and figure out what is your gift and what is your skill set. Henceforth, mm -hmm. certain people were born into quote unquote trades. You were blacksmith, you were goldsmith, meaning that your parents were smiths of gold. So that's the trade that gets passed down to you because the DNA of your father was one that was uh that was his trade. Mm -hmm. So when we identify the skill set or we, when we identify the gifts or the talents, we begin to do what we begin to speak to those gifts speak to those talents keep yeah so the parents whose children are like 12 graduating college this is what they do they say mm -hmm. i didn't teach the child google gaga i didn't teach them third grade level i spoke to a eight-year-old like they were 18 years old because yeah. the information that i was teaching them they already had it inside of them mm -hmm. they already had it in them the parents was like i just started on algebra and little timmy picked up on it because the, yeah. the information is innate you still carry over what you already had we just not we're not skilled enough to activate memory we're not skilled enough to activate uh talent we, we don't we don't have we don't we're not activating the subconscious so they got parents mm. that put the little babies to sleep with music with 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 with, with the uh with the binaural beats they yeah. have children that go to sleep listening to ebooks with audio books, they have children going to sleep, being programmed to be geniuses. So it is a this is all programmable. It's dealing with the brain being programmable and the subconscious being programmable. That's what it is. And the children from zero to seven are all programmable. Your baby could speak ten languages if you programmed it. You could put on the Rosetta Stone at night, and it could be Mandarin, uh, the Mandarin playing. Mm. Mm. Then you take your child. To Wuhan and that nigga's like, <laughs> like, how did you know this? Shit? <laughs> so look, so so speaking of Wuhan, so let, let's just kind of speak to like um, some some current stuff. So speaking of Wuhan, you spoke on Fauci and Bill Gates. Like, yeah. I think one thing about the whole COVID nineteen, um, and I spoke to, about this on my own uh, platform. Like, it's exposing a lot, right? Man. So. So I it's think a great it's a, exactly, and it's a part of that apocalypse that we speak of. Like a people, a lot of people are awakening, and they're yeah. saying it's a lot of shit that the government is doing, and it's and they're not it's not talking about. So with the internet being at our disposal, like how how, how do we like adequately research? You know, it's too much. It's really information overload. Like how do you know what to believe? Yeah, it's a flood. Yeah, like so how do you know like what to believe with the research? Like how do you kind of work through that? Um. <clears throat> You know, right at this point, when it when it comes to the when it comes to the research, because I've been doing it so long, and I, I've been so quote unquote locked in, it's 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 really synchronicity at the end of the day. The mm -hmm. like there's a there's a spiritual force that's feeding me. Like there's no mistakes. There's I've 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 given up on the fact that coincidence doesn't really exist. So mm -hmm. I'm just in a I'm in a certain kind of alignment where I'm I'm able to access information as soon as i go surfing you know as i surf and as i as i travel and i dig i don't i don't give up i i just i, I yeah. break through barriers, i push through articles i click links i google things i speak to google google what is 
this? Yeah. Mm. Google, what about this? Google, what is the top 10 this? You know, I utilize those tools because those are new tools. Prior to that, I'm in a library. Mm -hmm. Prior yeah. to that, I'm, I'm listening to Bobby Hammond tell me the book list and then I'm going to steal all of the books. Okay. <laughs> Word. You know, mm -hmm. so it's just at this point, and I, I'm also connected to a network of some very insightful scholars, you know, they be dropping shit. I get a, I get most of my information by going over old videos and watch and listening to old blog talk shows that we did wow. 10 years ago with Blair, Sabi, uh, Valentine, uh, Dr. Francis Quest, Dr. Africa, like all of that, most of the ancestors that made transition, we had the opportunity mm -hmm. to interview them, you know, mm -hmm. and to, and to become, you know, and to become, uh, uh, you know, known to them. I wanted them to know who I was. Right, right. You know, and they seen us around, but they didn't see us in that capacity. Like, I've always been in this community. Like I said, when my mama and Sabi was doing their things, we was there. Like, it wasn't like we weren't there. We was always at the lectures. But when we popped up, I popped up with my clothing brand. Like, and you know, I was going to lectures and I was like, I'm in the wrong fucking, you know, I'm in the audience. I need to be outside in the hallway mm. you know, doing commerce because at the end of the day, I'm in the streets. I'm, 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 I'm tied into boosting. You know what I mean? I'm tied into street shit. I'm stealing. I'm, I'm taking European stuff from them and giving it to my people for a half price. And I'm profiting off of that. But I'm in my mind. I'm like, that shit is whack. I don't want to wear these clothes. It, it, it's mm. not. I'm learning about who I am. I'm getting self-aware. So somebody, my dude, a white boy, Vinny, right? He's Italian. He's gray. I don't consider him white. He's gray. He's in the middle. Nah, he's dead ass. He's gray. It's not a lot of grays out there, but he's mm. one of them. Mm. He taught me the art of making t-shirts in like 02 when it wasn't known by everybody. He taught me yeah. about heat presses, rhinestones, you know, vinyl transfers, mm -hmm. and then... I was doing like Tupac's and the Biggies and everything, getting mad bread for that. And then one day I just put a King Tut on the shirt. My brother had drew out like a, a, a modern day Pharaoh. I threw it on the shirt. I blinged it out. I put that bitch on the table. Out of here. Mm. Yeah. And it, yeah. And I was like, oh, so y'all gonna, you know, y'all gonna meet me from behind the table now. This is how I'm gonna introduce myself. From behind the table, I'm gonna do business with my people, learn from my people, network with my people, meet my people, see some of my heroes, right? Make my mama kind of proud, you know, cause mm -hmm. she was like, oh, we're trying to, you know, she, she was trying to, you know, she was seeing us making making advances to, to become part of this community. And it was like, okay, you know, that's what's up. Dr. Sabi wasn't the biggest, cause he wasn't the biggest fan of metaphysics and Kemet and, other little things. He had his personal, you know, um, mandates. His whole thing was fuck that. Get on this health shit and heal the people. All of that is all of that is a crock of shit. That was his mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. He was like, nah, we, you know, we're gonna figure this out on our own. You know what I mean? Your mom is a tourist, right? Yeah. Yeah, my mom too. Drew's mom is a tourist too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Scorpio, uh, so, yo, yeah, we, yeah, Scorpio, yeah, November thirteenth, bro. Word, yeah, November eighth, right here. <laughs> oh, y'all are crazy. That's the <laughs> <laughs> but yo, like, so I think that um, like you definitely, we Richard said it earlier, you're a visionary. You see things way before the time. So, like, yeah. how do you deal with the frustrations and possibly sometimes loneliness when you're trying to spread all this information that you have to people, but they just don't get it? Like, how do you deal with the frustrations, bro? My therapy is my lives. My therapy is my Melanin Mondays and my Third Eye Thursdays. I promise you, the faceless, nameless audience that I have, that I get occasion to meet, you know, I meet them on occasions and they're the most beautiful, wonderful, loving people. And it'd be like, damn, we need to figure out a way to, you know, make this shit happen the way I'm not speaking into a phone. I need to see y'all because... Y'all are beneficial to my growth and development the same way that you're saying that I'm beneficial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that was my therapy, bro, because they get me. They get it. 
they 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 I got people who who been following me from from inception, you know, and they get it, so they help me with it with with the um frustration. Um, I'm 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 active, so I'm outside a lot, and I'm in New York. Well, I'm not right now, but in New York, in Atlanta, and in um, like I was in VA, moving around a lot. I couldn't go nowhere, bro. Like I could. Like people will remind me every day that the shit that I'm doing means something. Yeah, bro. So I'll yeah. be on. Yeah, you know, there be times I'm on a train stressing, like on some real stressing, cause I'm, you know, we Scorpio, so. I could talk to you. Yeah, your bag, yeah, yeah. Go through. We're morbid, bro. Like I got to facts. The, the illest shit on the train because the trains are morbid. Like I love the train system and hate <laughs> it at the same time. It's a necessary evil, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I draw inspiration. Um, I lose compassion on the train sometimes, and then I, I find ways to get it back. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'd be on my Thanos shit after a long trip sometimes. <laughs> I'd just be like, if they, you know, if that cord could just get rid of niggas, I'd just be like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it, man. Like, we'll, we'll try this shit again. How about it? Like, mm -hmm. all you niggas got to go on the train. Bye. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. I've been on trains and the shit would look like the whole skid row was there. Mm. I'm like, this shit, you know, because New York got issues. For sure. And, mm -hmm. You know, I'm able, I got loved one. I got people, you know, I got a twin brother. Mm -hmm. I got AA. I got KT to arch degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got brother Rich when he picks the phone up. I got Kambada, mm -hmm. you know. So I got people around me that I bounce some of this shit off of. And they bounce things off of. And I, I'm able to keep my sanity on yeah. those levels. Yeah. Because all of us were considered to be crazy at one time. To each other. I was mm. like, this nigga KT is crazy. I'm like, <laughs> AA is a fucking, he's a, well, he, this nigga that lost his mind. Blue pill? Oh, he smokes too much fucking mushrooms. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I, I mean, I threw him away mad times because I figured that they were crazy, but it was only because they were, you know, sticking to their genius. Mm. It's their genius. Their genius is their, their genius is not you don't have there's no book to describe you know their genius is not from you know uh the nation of islam or the more science temple no offense to any of the organizations mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but it's, mm -hmm. un it's not organized it don't come out of the tablets mm -hmm. so it's some new shit it's unorthodox and i'm like where did it well you know i gotta follow your lead and trust you and you know you're giving me these numbers and then you're taller, and then I, AA is giving us the Kabbalah and these Bruh. Jewish creatures and these Sephiroths and this fucking tree. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. that's Egyptian. So a lot of steel sharpened steel. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of shit that goes on. You know, people bump heads. People, people done, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you know, hopefully one day all of these stories will be told. Shit, Black died used to be the editor at a, at a newspaper that my brother was working on. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, editor on Four Corners newspaper in like 01, right? And I was ignorant then. I wasn't into, you know, mm. too, I was, you know, I was like on the, I was woke. Let's just say that. I was on my woke shit. Yeah, and yeah. I wanted to party and bullshit, fornicate, running around with shorties, you know, mad materialistic kind of, Mm. And, you know, occasionally meditate with these niggas and, you know, smoke with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, but in my mind, I wasn't dedicated to, to, to I wasn't 10 toes down. Mm. And I, I wasn't, you know, they were patient with me. Henceforth, why I'm patient with others. Henceforth, why I'm relatable to people who are, quote unquote, you know, they're not all the way in. They're not and all I, the way in. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't all the way in. but. When my son came, he left me no options. It was, it was, it was, I, I, I was, I was all the way. I saw him come out of his mother's womb. 
I saw him open up his eyes. That was my firstborn. I was like, wait a fucking minute. Wait, what just happened? Like, for real, yeah. It was surreal. They call it the Kairos moment. Now that I research mm. it, it's called the Kairos moment. It's oh, a, sure. a once in a lifetime moment in time that is an opportunistic time that doesn't really reappear. It's a window. Mm. And they call it the Kairos birth. And I just was like, yo, I have a purpose now that extends whatever I thought that I had. And you, when you make your mind up, there's a magnetic pull that will yeah. begin to pull you towards something that is going to pull you towards something else. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm going in the, on this journey. I, I don't even know what my, I don't even know what, what, what would be considered a touchdown. You know, at this point, I really don't know. I, do I want to build a Wakanda? You know, do right. I just a black only island? Like, you know, <laughs> Do I want, do I want the, you know, I don't know. I really can't tell you. Mm -hmm. Peace, love, freedom, justice, those things ring still in my hearts of hearts. Like, if if, if we could just exist as creatives, mm. and then these women and these babies is just chilling. Like, whenever, whenever they ask us to go and do something, we could go and do it and get it. And then the brothers is not hating on each other, and we're Thank building you. stuff, and yeah. we're yeah. learning, we're refining our talents and our skills. Like I'm good. I don't need. It's not about the money, bro. We've had money. The mm. money is the means. It's providing me the opportunity to get tools and resources that are finite that will break and upgrade one day. That shit is not forever. Mm. It's the fact that my mother and my father are still here, bro. Yeah. It's the holding my son and I'm, I'm on FaceTime with my other son and my daughter like that's it right there I mean mm -hmm. I don't want to make it sound all kumbaya shit, mm -hmm. but I'm 44 right and I'm not saying that I've seen it all but I've seen a lot yeah yeah and there's no love the fulfillment that I have is when I receive information the fulfillment is when I see my network winning mm -hmm. and the fulfillment is to see our people come up out of this motherfucking spell and this curse to me that's that's my purpose right now until further notice you know there might be some other shit that comes about but i just want to see us win mm. because we've been down so long but you stay down so you could come up right. we got 99 problems that makes us that gives us 99 opportunities to be a fucking beast in these streets mm -hmm. and because everybody's watching us Mm -hmm. With a genre, niggas think because hip hop, hip hop is not rap music. Hip hop is you, my nigga. Mm -hmm. Hip hop is me. That's when they say hip hop is the number one genre. You hip hop, you, you the number one. You you superseded. There's no other algorithm out here. There's no other person walking up in this bitch with the swag of yours. There's nobody turning heads like you. There's nobody whose voice is more. Uh, uh, um, you know, commandeering in yours mm. outside of all of the propaganda that they're throwing on us. Because they trying, but that's all little dick energy. Everything that you've been seeing from them shooting us down to them, the white women talking slick about us, Fox News, Trump trying to style on us, them saying that we all, that's all fragility. Mm. That's all inferiority complex inferiority. saying that y'all been winning for so long, you know, stay inside. Don't jog in our neighborhood. Low key, that's just saying we don't want you. We want to scare you niggas from flexing your muscles this summer, jogging around our women, looking like you're enjoying yourself. We want uh -huh. y'all to upset. We want y'all to be scared. We want y'all to cry. We don't want y'all to function. We don't want y'all to be dunking the basketball. We don't want y'all to be free because all of that free melanin is making us nervous. Please mm -hmm. calm it mm -hmm. down because you niggas are a little bit too lit. Y'all starting to do these dances on TikTok and, you know, y'all are just too free for us. And <laughs> what does fear do? They incite fear. What does fear do? Fear helps to reactivate PTSD in the slaves or the population of the ones who they enslave because they know that it's not all of us. They know that it's not all of us. They're out here slave checking niggas. They, they, they like, they put in, they put in feelers out there to find out which one of the slaves, who got the DNA of the slave, and who got the DNA of the motherfucking free nigga? Mm. Whoa.
Wow. And everything that you're seeing is pushback because free niggas started becoming very arrogant in the early 2000, like 08, 09, 010, and they became very boisterous. And they were challenging the police, they were challenging authority, they were challenging judges, they were doing a lot of stuff, and the police did what is called a blowback. This is all pushback. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then they and then and they were they were being challenged about, you know, they were being challenged in court about the black status. They were being sued. People were putting liens on them. So they started pushing that black shit through the media super hard. Henceforth, Black Lives Matter. They made they 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 rebranded that shit. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's nothing personal against black people. That's a corporate fight, fam. That's all corporate. That's just colorful corporate corporate law. That's a de facto government fighting for their property. That's all. That's not about black people. It's about the corporate designation of black in a colorful law system where black, with the color black, right, is right. Tim Mortus, which means dead in the eyes of the law. Henceforth, you could kill a nigga and just say, "Oh, I, he was burglarizing the house," and the house. The house was under construction. How did he? How, what did you steal? A fucking nail, bro? Mm. And then mm-hmm. who, talk about it. Who made Boss Hog and fucking uh, Roscoe Bico train the 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 the, the, the police in the sheriff? Yeah, you niggas is out here deputizing yourself in in Radiator Valley. If you don't have a fucking seat, bro, mm. people think that they could deputize us because they watched the same slavery programming that we was watching. Because if they watch the slavery program in like 12 years of slave, they have a vantage point that you don't have. They're not looking at it like they're the slave. Because yeah. Yeah. nobody in Hollywood has put out the, the movie about the white slaves yet. They scared. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. They didn't put the, they, there was Irish, there was millions of white slaves. Go yeah. and get the yeah. gold cargo. They stopped that shit during the Civil War. What People don't want to, the white, there was white fucking slaves fighting shirtless, and God, they didn't have no fucking shoes and whatnot. Mm. You know, running around with the banshee yell. Those was white slaves. Running around with the banshee yell. Wow. No, no was, there was something hard. called a banshee. There was a yell that they said that when they heard that yell, they knew that these crazy motherfuckers was coming. And it sounded mm. like it was a scary call. But that, that that was those Europeans that was fighting against the quote-unquote Indians and the Africans or the Aboriginals who owned them. Oh, shit. Killed them, took their land, you know, put them in slavery, flipped the script on them. Mm. You know? So, it's, you know, man, it's a lot of things going on, but, you know, the world is waking up. The prophecies are being fulfilled. The sleeping giant is up. This is going to be a long summer. Uh, We have to be there for the hood because the hood has to be able, like the brother said, the hood is being solicited by the woke industry. Mm. The woke marketplace. These are the new charlatans. These are the people that Malcolm X warned you about. Now, Dick Gregory, I love Dick Gregory, but he called Dick Gregory out and Lena Horn. But I guess this is around the time before Dick Gregory went all the way in with his consciousness. This was the beginning of his journey. And he was like, nah, fuck that. So that's what the woke community... now. People would be like, Red, you contradicting yourself. Do you want them to be asleep or not? I would say I would want everybody to be awoke. Mm-hmm. I would want everybody, mm-hmm. but I'm speaking about people who have agendas. Not the woke people per se that are on their journey. I'm speaking about the fucking wolves and sheep and sheepskins that are out here, you know, using a new wave to sell you instead of Ciroc liquor, they're gonna sell you Ciroc alkaline water. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and, and and they're not. They had the health is wealth thing on revolt. Did you see a tribute to Doctor Africa? Because I didn't finish watching the whole thing. I turned it off the minute the nigga P Diddy started talking. Because mm. I was. A, I they didn't. I they like to, none of the doctor. They didn't. Doctor Africa just made transition. He's mm-hmm. the perfect mm-hmm. person to highlight during the coronavirus because all of his books have the answers that the fucking media keeps. Um, they 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 squeeze in little nuggets out every other week. Oh, maybe sunlight will help. Niggas is like yeah, yeah, yeah. in my inbox with all of this uh, white people and white coats telling me about sunlight. When I'm like, fam, not only did KT say that months ago, mm. but niggas are so dishonorable. Uh, Doctor Africa was saying that forever. 
So why don't you share his? Why does it take somebody in a white coat to make this shit do what it do? When mm -hmm. if you keep mm -hmm. waiting for that, you're going to die. That's why people. That's why most of the elderly were passing because they're waiting for the, they're, they're listening to these people's every single word. They mm -hmm. have all of the trust in them, and the people who are not dying were the people who did not go to the hospital. How about that? How about the ones that went to the hospital and died? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They wasn't picking up mad people from their house dead. They were picking them up from the senior homes and they were picking them up from orphan and ventilators because they were in those hospitals dying. They were people, it's mad people that recovered from home. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So the, it's going to be a long summer. We have to continue to open up the aperture of our people's eyes. And we have to move the charlatans out of the way. And if they want to play in this field, they have to play by our rules, okay? We did not come into crack and try to run that shit. We did not come into Ciroc mm. and try to run it. We did not come at you niggas Rock Nation Brawl and tell you niggas, yo, put on more of or paint. Like, we didn't tell you niggas how to dress. Don't come in here trying to tell people what to do. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. And don't okay. come in here trying to give information that's not right. And don't come in here introducing us to fucking Dr. Fauci and Bill Gates, nigga, because mm -hmm. we're not on that. We're not jacking yeah. none of these people. Don't introduce Titans us. are already there, yeah. You just got to listen yeah. to the Titans, yeah. They wrote, the doctors that these niggas have on the Breakfast Club is our customers. Mm. And it's no offense to them, but it's like, come on, fam. You know, why, 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 why get why get exposed to the truth when you niggas, when the cameras is on, y'all still telling lies? Why get exposed to the truth? Like, Nick Cannon could have did a health as wealth conference. He, mm. he been exposed to the illest health people in the world while he was doing the Dr. Sebi thing. He could have stepped it up. He has the platform. All of these people got platforms. They got resources. They know people to know people. But do you think that they're making a way for the people who've been doing this this is my thing. If you've been doing it, pay attention. To, I'm paying attention to those who've been doing it. All of the Johnny come lately's, I'm not paying attention to them because they have to wait their fucking turn. Mm. They don't have the experience, nor do they have the acumen to treat millions of people. I don't trust that. No, where's your certificate? This is, you know, who you niggas just coming off of YouTube, but no. Mm -mm. And even yeah. if you have. Yeah agree that means nothing and that that shit went out the window hmm. it, it didn't mean nothing before but the whole world got to witness that the doctors were some bum, bambling bumbling fools and they're not united and there's a hundred videos with doctors telling on each other so the mm -hmm. hypocrite mm -hmm. that's crazy it. yeah they all telling on each other and they they exposed it so it would never be what it was before uh, American politics will never be what it was because of the exposure of Hillary Clinton and they're about to lock Obama up. So black people need to get ready for that because mm. they let Michael Flynn out yesterday. It's over for the Clintons. It's over for Obama. Donald Trump is going to fulfill his promise and that was to deliver the king. Mm. Remember Ed Starks and Game of Thrones? Yeah, That's yeah. what they need to do to that man. I'm dead serious. Mm. Black people need to detach themselves from you know, whatever feelings that they're going to have over that. And, you know, this is political war, warfare, and we don't have no ponies in that race. You should tell D. Ray McKinnison and, and all of the uh, Black Lives Matter, go and protect Obama because mm. he protected you. He made you a protected class. But whatever they was in Benghazi doing, whatever they was doing in government, that don't got nothing to do with yeah. me. So yeah. whatever his fate is, that's on him. Mm. Straight mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But Donald Trump and them is on that nigga's ass. That's a fact. And and I, I didn't, but I, I, I was being told about it. And somebody told me, look, Michael Flynn is coming home Thursday. They told me that on Monday. Mm -hmm. So if everything else that they was telling me is going to come true, because damn near on Thursday, I was on my live, bro. And the shit, no, I was studying for my lecture. And the shit came through the wire. Michael Flynn, DOJ drops the charge. They Trump controls the Department of Justice by way of the Attorney General and all of them. They're not going to prosecute any race war. They're not going to prosecute no purges. They're not going to prosecute anything that happens right now. 
So if they decided that they wanted to purge, bury niggas, shallow grave, FEMA camp you, and, you know, uh, say that you had the corona, when, when China says, what happened to the Negroes? Nah, them niggas had corona. Don't worry about it. Remember, the wall is not to keep us, the Mexicans coming in. It's to keep niggas from cu- coming out of America. Leaving, yeah. So the next four years is tantamount. Mm. It's tantamount. Mm. I, got, I got partners in Africa who went over there, and they got, they got the authorities trying to take them out of Africa. They was visiting Africa, yeah. right? And then the corona shit hit. So then it was like, I'm not leaving Africa. America got, uh, they got, they got them niggas, they hunting them down right now, trying to get them out, trying to get them back in America. Wow. So it was all of their citizens back. Mm. Wow. They mm. just think they, you, you would think they would leave them niggas in the jungles of Africa. Like, you know what? Y'all just go rock. You know, we're going to deal with this COVID-19. No, they're like, nigga, don't you niggas belong to us? Can you come back? I'm like, mm. damn. So, you know, it's going to take, uh, we, could, we could solve it overnight if we were um, unified, if we had a unification. Look, look, there's three things that we need to implement. A black tax, a black vote, mm. and a black code. That's it. And a black what? A black code. A black tax for everybody that's on the underground. Mm-hmm. All of you strippers, all of you hustlers, all of you um, bars, nightclubs. Y'all got to pay a tax every night of 1%. Mm -hmm. That tax goes into a quote-unquote, that tax, oh, we could do a tax once a week, or we could do a tax during paycheck, because Garvey built what he built off of pennies and nickels of people's paychecks, right? Mm -hmm. But that tax will go into a budget. That budget will help build businesses. Mm -hmm. It will help free the homies. It will help pay for some kind of developments to happen in real estate. It could even purchase a motherfucking mini town and whatnot. Then we need a black vote. We need to vote leadership in. I'm tired of these fake ass thought leaders. I'm tired of niggas self-anointing themselves. I'm tired of people running around saying they the next this or to do that. No, you're Mm. not. Mm. No, you're not, my nigga. Let's have a vote. (laughs) Do what, you know, we're, we're we're in a quote unquote democracy. So, we need to vote for what's important. We need to vote for who should be our spokesman. We need to vote for who the we who 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 we don't trade, uh, who don't who we don't rock it, who, who you know, what is our first project though? Yeah. What are we gonna focus on? Yeah. And things like that should come about in the vote. And then we should have a black code, a 10-step code as to what we're ro- what we're rocking with and what we're not rocking. Thou shalt not wear a fucking dress. Bottom line. What's There's acceptable and no what's not? Mm-hmm. You know, huh? What's acceptable and what's not? It needs to be a it needs to be a black code. And that code needs to be adhered to. And if you don't adhere to that, then you would be considered a traitor and treasonous. And there's penalties that come with that. And I don't want to talk about that on this live. Mm. But what I'm saying is if we implement these things. We could begin some kind of order. I'm not saying that that's going to solve everything, but right. order needs to be restored, and we need our own, and we have our own because we got us. Mm. Right? I didn't. I didn't. I don't think during this whole lockdown, I don't think I came across one Caucasian, and I'm okay. You know mm. what I mean? I've been utilizing their platforms, but I don't need to. But I'm all right. Like so, I realize I don't need them. So. You know, I know people that was working nine to fives and they good. They like, shit, huh? I don't even need a nine to five right now. I figured it out. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was heavy. Yeah. 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 But yo, man, we could, bro, we could do this all day with you, man. <laughs> For real. That's a but dollars. um, do you have like, do you have like any, um, any book recommendations so we could wrap us up, take us home? Some book recommendations. Superior Way of the Man. Go on. Mars. Yeah. Uh, David yeah. Peter? It's a yeah. good one. Um, the Long Tail. Okay. I think Chris Anderson. Um, the Startup Economy. I, I know the Startup Community by Brad Feld, a European, who teach you about how to create a startup community by way of incubators, um, accelerators. 
you know, how to basically set up a community where there's multiple startups and you're functioning as an ecosystem that you bring in trade, you bring in um, investors, angel investors, lean investors, all of these things that they're doing right now. Um, and another book, uh, My Journey with Dr. Sabi. Go and check out that. I got a chapter in there called Finding Philip. So, you know, okay. those are the recommendations. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting reading in that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, man, we, look, we, we definitely got to have you on another time, bro. Like, yeah, like, I'll pull up. Yeah, yeah. Good. Like, I, I really enjoyed myself. I, I appreciate the questions and the energy was great, you know. So whenever you want us to pull up, I'll bring company if you need me to bring my bro ham or whatever. Yeah. Yo, it's know. funny because um, Blue is more like me and you're more like Drew, bro. <laughs> you know that Scorpio, that Scorpio duality, man. That's right. You yeah. know, that, that exists. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, Scorpio's I'm, I'm the Virgo. A I'm more like, brother, uh, I'm, I'm the Virgo. I'm more like Brother Rich. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Virgo, y'all are, mm-hmm. y'all are very interesting, you know. But Scorpios and Virgos do great creativity together. Ooh, yeah, great. yeah. There's a there's a cohesion. Yeah. So yeah. Facts, bro. Yeah, we man. appreciate you, man. Yeah, we yeah. definitely appreciate you, man. Thank you. Keep doing what y'all do. Keep building. You know. Keep pushing forward. Keep asking questions take the information that you learn and research more of it. Just dig deep, break through. Once you break through, there's no turning back. You know what I'm saying? And take today, this moon, this Scorpio moon, to break mm. through. You can. Mm. No? Yeah. yeah. The My last moon of the year. So plant, you know, uh, bury some shit. Some, this is about dealing with your um, lower self. This is about mm-hmm. dealing with your demons, confronting them, writing them on a piece of paper, tearing them up, burning them, burying them. You know, go out in the wood, chop a fucking, write, write your op name on a tree and then chop it down. Mm-hmm. And then burn that bitch. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Put it mm-hmm. in water and then, and then drown it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Yo, still, but still on the line, because we want to holler at you off this real quick. But I appreciate everybody for tuning in with us, man. Uh, make sure you follow Red Pill. Yo, give me your Instagram handles and all that, where they can follow you and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, E-L underscore Filthmore. E-L, like Elohim, underscore P-H-I-L-T-H-M-O-O-R. That's, right. that's, yeah, and the Note Alleged Media is the YouTube channel. Um, and you got the Pokemon, H- too. Yeah, netterflix.com is our streaming platform. Mm. Kingscounty.bigcartel. Yep. That's K-I-N-G-Z-K-O-U-N-T-Y. We're about to relaunch a new site on Shopify. Nice. And, uh, I need that Garvey hoodie, son. That shit is hard. Yeah. I joined, the, the tie-dye joined the car. I need that. Got that. We got that. We got Word. the tie-dye mask. You know? Mm-hmm. Immune. Yeah. Fire. With the chaos magic symbol. Cause that's what they're dealing with, chaos magic. Mm. 